Hey guys, it's Ben from Board to Bits here, and this is part three of our Unity Radial Menu tutorial. So in our last video, we created this menu um, and set it up so that now when we click it, we get the full um, circle of buttons based on the actions that we created in our uh, player interactable component. So it's great, the, uh, we get the buttons, they appear, but they don't they don't really do anything for us at the moment. When we click here, we see, you know, they they appear, but we can't, you know, we can't see which one we're hovering over, and we when we release, nothing happens. So what we're going to do today is we're going to add some functionality to these buttons and to our menu. So let's go right ahead and dive into our code again. Uh, we're just going to use the menu and button scripts that we created in this video. So first thing we need is we need a way for our button to tell our menu um, that it's selected because right now we have a we have a way of tracking which button is selected we created this button selected um, variable when we first created this menu class but we don't have any way for the radial button to say hey menu I am the currently selected button and how we're gonna do that is we're actually gonna create a new variable in radial button we're gonna say public radial menu my menu. And that's just going to refer to the fact that this is the menu that I am parented to. And we're going to quickly add, as we're setting our color and sprites and stuff for our button, we're also going to add that we're going to set this my menu. So new button dot my menu equals this. So now that we have that, we can um, tell, we can somehow tell the menu when the mouse is over this button, I should be the selected button. And when the mouse is not over me, there sh or is not over any button, this should just be null, this um, selected button. So the easiest way to do that is using uh, what Unity calls its event systems. And what that does is it tracks events like the mouse moving over something or clicking something or other things as well. But what we're really interested in is the mouse moving over something or moving off of it. So we're going to need another namespace up here. We're going to say using Unity unity engine dot event systems oh, oops if I type correctly and we're going to add a couple of interfaces up here if you uh, watched my uh, close on blur panel videos uh, this is going to look really familiar but there's two um, there's two interfaces we're going to be interested in here one is I pointer enter handler and the other is going to be I pointer exit handler. And a really easy way to implement interfaces is to just say to right click the right click the interface, go to refactor, implement interface, and then we're just going to drop in the function that we need for that to work, and we'll do the same for the exit handler as well. Implement interface, oops, drop that below there. We can get rid of the extra tags here. We don't have that much code that we need these uh, regions and we can delete the system throws that they have so basically all we also while we're while we're cleaning up delete that too okay so what we want is when we enter when our pointer enters a given button we want to set my menu dot selected to this particular button and then when that when the pointer leaves the button, we're just gonna set it back to to so there's nothing there. So we'll make that null. So now we now have when when we're over a button, we'll go here just kind of show you. When we are, come on, load, buddy. When we are over a button, you can't obviously see we don't have anything showing this, but right now my menu the menu is saying okay the red button is selected oh now nothing's selected now the blue button is selected so when we release it's going to have that information at that last moment before it destroys itself so what we can do is say in here in our uh, in our um, mouse release code we can add one more if statement and say if selected so if there is something selected and it's not just null and this is where you would do whatever your um, button action would be. Like if you have a function tied to it or you're using something like a command pattern, 
um, and you have like a you have an action stored in the uh, in the button. This is where you would execute that. For our purposes, we're just going to say debug.log, and then we're going to use that title that the uh, that the selected button has. So we're going to say selected dot title, and then we'll just say was selected. So now what that does, we'll go to our to here again. Hit play, let it compile, hit play, and we'll show the console. So when we click, and now if we go over to this and we release it, we see that attack was selected. Or if we go to the shield, block was selected. So this is this is the basic functionality that we're getting here of saying, okay, when you hover over this button and release, that's the button that's being selected. And like I say, right now we're, we're just passing a string, but you could pass anything you really wanted in through this. You could pass a specific enum if you had a setup like that. You could pass a um, you could pass a function if you want to get into a little bit deeper code. Um, really, you can pass anything now to this so that you're making your selections through these buttons just by passing that information in. So there's one more thing I want to do in this video, which is that right now you still like they're buttons, but they just feel very flat. Like you can't tell when you're selecting what. So it's better if there's some kind of way, like especially if say your, your mouse pointer was smaller and that you might not be sure where you are, if anything's being selected, or if you did this and then suddenly nothing happened, you're like, well, why not? I thought I was on a button. So we're gonna make the buttons a little bit more reactive. And this will be really simple to do. We're gonna go into our button script and we're gonna just add one more variable here. It's not gonna be public, but we're gonna add a color and we're gonna call this default color. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna store whatever the base color of the button is so that we can change the color when we hover over it. So it gives it that little bit of, a little bit more pop. You could do this, you could do this with size, you could do this with really anything you want, but I'm gonna do it with color. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say when the pointer enters, we're gonna set this default color equal to circle dot color. So that's gonna take that base color that the circle already is and store it in this in this variable. But then we're gonna change circle dot color and we'll just make it white because it'll pop and it'll show on all of our colors. And now once we once we leave this, we're gonna to wanna to go back to that default color, which is just as easy as saying circle dot color equals default color. So now, when we go back in here, we can see, we'll hit play. And now when we hover over, it goes to white. And then when we leave it, it goes back to red. So now we, now we have a much better idea, oh, this is definitely the one that we're hovering over. We release it, block was selected. We, you know, there's no doubting here. Heel was selected here. Nothing's, nothing's getting highlighted white. Nothing gets selected. So it's a really simple thing, but it, it adds a little bit more uh, feedback for your buttons. You want to definitely always give your player as much feedback as you can so that they're not going to make mistakes. and Or if they do make mistakes, they're not going to get frustrated because they know why something didn't work the way they wanted it to. So that actually wraps up this video right now. Um, it's a pretty, like I say, simple thing. Um, but that actually gives you that interaction and gives the menu some function beyond just showing you a bunch of buttons. Um, next, I'm going to do one more video. It's going to be a, another pretty quick one too, but it's going to basically just add a little bit more polish to your menus by um, showing some animation and um, maybe some labels for your different objects if you had multiple objects and you want to be sure of which one you're clicking. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that video uh, coming out probably in the next day or so. And um, hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time.